With the threat of debt distress looming, Kenya has had to get creative. The country started a tax amnesty program that has raised billions of shillings. But will it be enough to prevent a future debt default? And how will the country deal with the tax cheats determined to take advantage of the scheme? And then we head over to Africa's former largest oil producer, Nigeria. For the past couple of years, the country's economy has struggled and life has been much more difficult for its citizens. But somehow, Nigerians have turned to some tried and trusted advice to help them weather the storm. Save money, and money will save you. We take a look at the reasons behind the growth of the country's savings rate. This is Business Edge. I'm Tolilokwe Adela Rubalogun. Let's start with the African business headlines. ESCOM has announced its plan to apply for a 32% tariff increase from the 1st of April 2023. This increase is seen as yet another attempt by ESCOM to persuade the National Energy Regulator of South Africa to grant it tariffs that are reflective of its cost. But for many years, NERSA has disagreed with ESCOM on how much revenue it is allowed to raise from consumers and granted it significantly lower tariffs. While it asked for a 20.5% increase for 2022 through 2023, it was granted a 9.61% increase by the regulator. And staying in South Africa, a survey from the Social Research Foundation states that about half of South Africa's top earners and university graduates are considering immigration as citizens lose faith in the country's future. According to the findings, out of 3,204 registered voters the Johannesburg-based research group surveyed, 53% of university graduates and 43% of those who earned more than 20 rand a month are considering leaving the country. Overall, 23% of those surveyed said they have thought of moving out of South Africa. Confidence in the country's future has fallen after more than a decade, where average economic growth failed to match the increase in population. The country has been racked by corruption scandals in recent years and regular power outages since 2014. In East Africa, Kenya's Treasury projects that the East African region's biggest economy will grow by 5.8% in the fiscal year 2022 through 2023 and average 6.2% over the medium term. The growth in Kenya's economy will be supported by a surge in private sector activities, including recoveries in agriculture. In its budget review and outlook paper for 2022, the Treasury noted that there are various domestic and external risks that could dampen the economic outlook. And we circle back to West Africa, where the group CEO of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Milakiari, says that the Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline project will create wealth and improve the standard of living of countries within the region. He was speaking during the signing ceremony of the Memoranda of Understanding between the NNPC, the National Office of Hydrocarbon and Mines of Morocco, and ECOWAS. The Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline project, an initiative of the federal government of Nigeria and the Kingdom of Morocco, was conceived during the visit of King Mohammed VI of Morocco to Nigeria in December 2016. Those are a few business headlines for you at this time. Our first conversation is up next, and we are in East Africa's largest economy, where Kenya is finding out that a tax amnesty may not be enough to stop defaulting and evasion. We'll have the details after this. Late in 2020, Kenyan tax intelligence officials discovered that they had a problem. 1,309 businesses and wealthy individuals had failed to pay the full sum of their taxes. Collectively, they owed about 259 billion shillings. Now, in response, Kenya's government rolled out the Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program, a three-year-long tax amnesty scheme that would allow people and businesses who defaulted on their taxes between July 2015 and June 2020 to come clean without paying the full amount of fines and penalties. So far, the scheme has been moderately successful. 
Kenyan authorities collected 9.6 billion shillings worth of unpaid taxes between January 2021 and June this year. It's also one of the reasons why Kenya exceeded its tax target for the year ended June 2022 by 149 billion shillings, bringing tax total collections over the year to 2.03 trillion shillings. However, the Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program seems to be dealing with a number of tax cheats, people who want to use the scheme to get away with tax evasion. Mtualo Musoni, economist, joins me now to discuss this. Mtualo, welcome to Business Edge. As we probably say on this side of the continent, long time, no see. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be back here. All right, so let's look at this in terms of the issues that um, Kenya has with tax evasion and tax defaulting. Exactly how big of an issue is it? Because if we're hearing that around 1,309 people owed over 259 billion shillings worth of back taxes, that seems to be a massive issue. So tell me in your own words, how big of an issue do you think it is for Kenya? It's, it's a very big issue based on the fact that, of course, Kenya has had budget deficits. Essentially, it has not been financing its own development using domestic revenues only. It has gone out to the external world. It has gone out to the local market to borrow to try to finance its development. It has an increasing debt to GDP ratio, now standing at the 12th in Africa. So the failure to collect revenue because of tax evasion, tax cheating, and people not just coming forth to declare the taxes that they're supposed to pay is a very, very big issue and has got very big economic implications, which, of course, in turn, um, result even in an increase in the cost of living, in an increase in inflation because of the pressure that comes with having to repay the debt. 1,309 taxpayers corresponding to about 259 billion is a very significant figure that can go a long way in financing development, not only in Kenya, but most African countries. And we have heard that only 9 billion of this has been paid. This mm. is less than 10%. So you can already see the extent to which um, this rather tax evasion is impacting on the limited resources that the country has to spend on its development agenda. So in a way, I get the fact that people paying taxes and that money being available for use is a massive issue for uh, Kenya. But what I want to get very clearly is, is this such an issue that it would explain how much debt the country has, how much overhead the government has? Because some would think we're making it seem like if Kenya was able to collect all these taxes from all these individuals, it wouldn't have any debt issues, it wouldn't have any budget deficit issues at all. Is that the case? No, no, no. Um, I think it's wrong to basically say it wouldn't have any debt issues or budget issues. But then it is also right to say that if it had collected this particular revenue, then the debt and budget issues would have been less than they are. So these are estimations. So the $259 billion might actually be more. And remember, we're looking at a period between 2015 and 2019. And recently, the taxman at the Kenya Revenue Authority, Aneth Eskam, that stretched over nine years, where companies were wrongly filing in invoices, saying they had supplied certain goods and services for the purposes of not paying tax. So the extent to which this tax evasion can actually be eroding the tax base might actually be greater than the estimates that we have now. Mm. So this is only one particular case. And if Kenya was to investigate truly and conduct audits in other cases and other sectors and other tax sites, I can assure you then we would have a reduction in the pressure to go to the external world and borrow to finance development. Of course, Financing development goes a long way. There's an issue to do with getting rid of redundant tax incentives, um, looking through double tax treaties as they exist, which Kenya has gone a long way with cancelling some of them and trying to probe some of the tax treaties that exist. And of course, looking through large businesses, multinational corporations that 
are operating in different countries and would make use of the differences in the tax rules across jurisdictions to evade and avoid tax. So this particular voluntary disclosure system also goes a long way in contributing to the potential revenues that Kenya can have at its disposal and also goes a long way to exposing that there are some tax gaps that are literally fraudulent businesses and individuals not to pay the right for share of taxes. Okay, so let's get into the elements that make up this voluntary tax disclosure uh, program because what it basically seems like is that those who owe a certain amount of money don't end up having to pay that money fully or even pay the fines attached to not paying the money on time and they're able to skirt around um, their responsibilities by paying just a certain amount. So what exactly are the elements that make up this voluntary tax um, scheme that Kenya has going on? So maybe, maybe it's important for us to define what this voluntary tax scheme is all about so we have an understanding of its implications. So the voluntary tax scheme is basically an initiative by a revenue authority, in this case the Kenya Revenue Authority, to give its clients, uh, the taxpayers, an opportunity to declare what they were supposed to have paid in taxes, which they didn't pay, without fining them with the punitive measures that exist in the law or having to pay interest or penalties on what um, they should have paid. So it gives an opportunity to someone who did not pay their taxes and knows that if the Kenya Revenue Authority comes into my businesses and audits it, they will find that I have not paid my taxes and I'll be subject to interest payments and penalties to just rightfully declare and say, I haven't paid this tax over this period of time, and you can come in and collect this tax over a period of time. So to make this work, you need to have a grace period, a period in which taxpayers would be allowed to fill in their tax obligation, which they did not previously fill in, um, in order to be exempted from these punitive measures. And what we have seen is that less than 10% of this revenue that has been disclosed voluntarily by taxpayers who are supposed to have paid their tax has been collected. It basically means that there's so much other revenue that should be collected by the revenue authority. And because now we are running beyond the period in which this amnesty exists, then we have to bring in the aspect of punitive measures and interest payments. Mm. So if you have paid your taxes, you don't have to deal with pay, uh, paying um, the interest and other punitive penalties that do exist. And if you do pay your taxes, which you later declare during this amnesty period, you won't have to pay that. But if you exceed this period as well, then you have to go back to paying the interest and uh, probably be subject to the punitive measures, depending on the extent to which you evaded or avoided the certain tax payments. All right, Mshala, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll look at that number you've mentioned. $9.6 billion is what has come in out of a potential almost $260 billion shilling. So we'll look at why the uh, authority is struggling to bring in more money and why people may not be taking advantage of the scheme. This is a conversation looking at Kenya's voluntary tax disclosure program, which should have been bringing in around 259 billion shillings, but right now has only brought in around 9.6 billion shillings. The question is, why the gap? When we come back, we'll see if we can get an answer. My guest is Mtualo Msoni, economist, as we look at Kenya's voluntary tax disclosure program. Now, the country has estimated that people owe 259 billion shillings. But so far, under the scheme, it has only been able to collect 9.6 billion shillings. So, Mtualo, um, I bring you in to ask this question. Why is that gap there? Why are we still struggling to even bring in just 10 billion shillings when there's so much money outside uh, that Kenya needs to make from this? Yes, so remember this, um, the voluntary disclosure system covers a certain period of time. And in this case, we're looking at 2015 to somewhere 2020. It's a very long period of time. And of course, tax liabilities are meant to be 
very large sums of money. Businesses won't just wake up and, of course, put this bill. It would be very difficult. I think the very reason that they evaded or avoided the tax in the first place was they wanted to probably reinvest the funds and so on and so forth, which is illegal and should not be condoned, of course. The punitive measures that have been relaxed and interest payments also come with the realization of probably pushing businesses to the corner to pay this particular amount. Remember, we're trying to encourage businesses to come forth and declare what they should have paid and what they will pay during an amnesty period. So even the exercise of the law by the authority is sort of relaxed during such a period where you want to get as many businesses declaring. I think we would see more payments pick up once the amnesty period in which you are allowed to make this payment without having to pay interest and penalty fees pick up once we are beyond this particular period because now it gives back the tools, the teeth to the revenue authority to go back to these businesses and say, because you are not paying this particular tax, we are going to shut down, we're taking you to court, you have to pay so much in interest payments, you have to pay so much in what you particularly owe the revenue authority. So every time in the amnesty period, and we've seen this in a couple of African countries, even Latin American countries that have come up with such a voluntary tax disclosure scheme, we see that it's not always that the target in terms of what has been declared by businesses as what they are owing to the government is actually collected. We usually see such deficits. And in the case of Kenya, of course, the deficit is quite large. So I'm hoping with the WUC over the coming months, I think more pushed by the Revenue Authority to try to corner these businesses back into making this particular payment. Mm. Perhaps this would have to be done by an extension of the amnesty period just basically giving a final warning to say, look, your tax bill is going to go up by three times more of what you're supposed to pay if you do not put your bill now. This is a good initiative to raise revenue, which wasn't previously collected. Of course, we've seen that the impact of raising this revenue has been Kenya exceeding its revenue targets. And if such revenue uh, initiatives can be duplicated across countries, I think we'll probably see less pressure in external financing and probably more domestic revenues being raised. Okay, so I think this conversation also begs the question, what actually has been going on uh, for tax defaulters and evaders to be able to have uh, amassed this amount of outstanding taxes? So there are, of course, the deliberate and intentional actions of those who are evading and defaulting, but is it that the Revenue Authority um, itself does not have the necessary manpower, technical um, needs, or technical know-how to be able to keep up with the widening tax nets and ensure that those who need to pay are paying and they're paying the right amount. Where is the issue when it comes to that? One of the largest contributors to Kenya Revenue Authority having found themselves in such a situation has been um, the wrong issuers of invoices by businesses uh, for the purpose of evading tax. This has not been followed by sales data. Um, one of the revenue remedial measures that the Revenue Authority has taken has been the increase in digitalization, which will require you to probably upload both the information, which will be easily verifiable, to say you don't have this tax liability. So there have been lots of cheating that has been done because of the lack of automation and of course I've always said um, on the business edge that if a revenue authority does not proactively audit, audit the cost of businesses, audit what's going on in a particular business, they will not be able to establish the right for amount of tax that has been paid. Mm. Um, there's been lots of empirical data, lots of journals that have shown that there's a positive correlation between rightfully declaring your tax liability and how the tax is being used. So if the taxpayer feels that um, there's no much incentive in paying tax, I don't see where the tax is going, there is a very high likelihood that they would cheat or not rightfully declare the tax that they are paying. So it's a two-way issue. Mm -hmm. Increase in digitalization will make it easy to verify this information. And of course, there is need 
for a more proactive approach by the Kenya Revenue Authority to actively audit businesses. Most of the focus has been on multinational corporations, but I think this has to be stretched out wider, seeing the need for revenue and the potential revenue that is being lost by businesses just not doing what they're rightfully supposed to do. Mm. Uh, and so it's interesting that we're hearing that even in the midst of this amnesty scheme, tax evaders and defaulters are still trying to cheat the amnesty scheme. So, Mtalo, how are they doing that? How are they trying to do that, even as it is? They are evaders and tax avoiders. Of course, they will try to see whatever means that is possible for them not to particular pay. So some of them are going back to what they rightfully declared and have reassessed their business position and seeing that we probably won't be able to stay afloat if we pay this much and are trying by all means to try to reduce this particular figure and argue probably that the liability that we thought that we had this liability we don't really have. I made mention of the use of um, invoices, sales invoices, when actual goods were not supplied as one of the ways that has been unnecessary as what is leading to this particular thing. So this is still being done. And this is why even in the amnesty period where we're trying to avoid um, the punitive measures, interest payments, I think auditing and a more proactive approach of the Revenue Authority being on the ground with businesses and looking through their books, verifying information that's provided even for a sample of taxpayers is quite important to understand exactly what's going on and if information that's been given is the right. So whether the amnesty program is extended or not, it will eventually one day come to an end. So what happens to those who miss, this, who, who miss the tax amnesty window? What are the kind of um, consequences they, they face? So the consequences, as probably pointed out in the law, is they would need to go back to pay the uh, interest payment the interest payments will be larger because then it's looking at an extended period of time uh, compared to what they would have paid if they had paid earlier on. They would have to do with the punitive measures. Punitive measures are specified in the law and then they will be enacted upon the particular business. So whatever the case is, I think it will be up to the revenue authority, law enforcers, to go back to these businesses and enforce the law uh, as it is stated, as a consequence of tax evasion uh, by the businesses. All right, so Mtralo, before I let you go, finally, this, looking at what has been brought in, what is outstanding, uh, the explanation you've given as to how the target or the amount outstanding may not actually be met, and what's going on with the scheme, would you consider it to be an overall success? And what do you think needs to be done to make it more successful uh, for the Kenya Revenue Authority? The rationale behind the scheme is very important, very encouraged for countries to give an opportunity to taxpayers to come back and rightfully declare what they should have paid, uh, the amount they should have paid, and pay the amount without having facing punitive measures and interest payments. It's a very welcome measure. It's a very good measure to raise revenue. But looking at how much it has raised and the deficit that's there from what has been declared, we would hardly call this effort a success. I think what we learned from this is probably looking at um, still maintaining some level of unity um, when exercising this. What I mean by this is um, still attaching some punitive measures to businesses that won't be able to comply and pay during the amnesty period. So probably are looking at saying, if you don't meet this obligation during this period that we've told you to pay without facing any punitive measures, the punitive measures are going to be higher. Perhaps we also need a more proactive approach. Of course, there's a trade-off for trying to encourage businesses to come through and declare the amounts that have not paid, but at the same time, we're trying to make them pay. So we certainly need that push also been given on the businesses to say, can you please pay up because um, this is coming ahead if you do not meet this certain obligation. Of course, uh, in the future, we want to see a situation where when voluntary declarations of uncollected and the collected taxes come through, 
would want to see even the taxpayers being more compliant, coming forth and saying this particular thing. And I think it all goes down to citizens, businesses, appreciation of tax. I made mention of empirical evidence that shows that if citizens, businesses are not appreciating the payment of tax, it's very likely that they would want to cheat the system. So it also links to how then the Revenue Authority Ministry of Finance budgets for these particular revenues, avoids corruption, and this translates to meaningful development and growth for the taxpayer to realize that army paying taxes is contributing to the well-being of my own business and the well-being of the nation and the population at large. All right, it's a fantastic note to end the conversation on. We'll see how these things play out. Uh, Kenya is not the only country to try this, and taxation is one of the issues that many African economies are having right now. Mtualo Msoni, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. All right. And as I said, many African economies are working to widen the tax net and to, of course, increase the internally generated revenue that comes from taxes. But there is a lot of default and evasion across the continent. There's still some time for the Kenyan Voluntary Tax Disclosure Program, and we'll see how successful this can be because many others around the continent have tried it, but the varying levels of success mean there might just be a few more tweaks to be made to these kinds of programs. You're watching Business Edge. When we come back, we're heading straight into the international business scene. Stick around. French air traffic control workers have begun a strike that is causing widespread disruptions to international travel. More than 1,000 flights have been cancelled and significant delays are expected. The strike is being organized by the SNCTA, the country's air traffic control union, escalating a dispute over wages, the rise in the cost of living and recruitment processes. The strike began at 6 a.m. this morning and is expected to last until Saturday, the 17th of September. Germany has seized the assets of a local unit of Russian energy producer Rosneft PJSC. The move is the latest by Berlin to take sweeping control of its energy industry, secure supplies, and end decades of deep dependence on Moscow for fuel. The takeover will see Germany take ownership of three oil refineries. The country has been particularly hard hit by the economic standoff with the Kremlin because of its reliance on Russian gas and oil. The country's state secretary described the move as a further step to assure Germany's energy security. Russia has not yet responded to this development. China's property market took a turn for the worst in August. Data released by the country's statistics office shows that home prices, sales and investment all fell in August. With strains on the finances of property developers and a mortgage boycott, investors are indicating that they're losing confidence in the sector. August marks the fourth consecutive month that property prices declined. And staying in Asia, the Apex Bank of the Philippines has revised the 2022 projections for the country's current account deficit. The country's central bank now expects the current account balance this year to register a deficit of $20.6 billion. This is an 8% increase from its previous forecast. The increase in the figure reflects the impact of a surge in imports on the back of the economy's recovery and higher commodity costs. When we come back to Business Edge after this break, we're in Nigeria and from there the rest of the continent with the IMF releasing its rankings for countries with the highest private savings. How have Nigerians done it? My guest will tell us. Stick around. <music> 